Hi everybody and welcome to Rocco Baby Crochet. I hope you're all well and had a lovely week. A huge warm welcome back to all my regular viewers and subscribers. It's lovely to have you here and thank you for supporting the channel. Massive warm welcome to anybody who's just found the channel for the first time. I hope you enjoy this free pattern. Stick around and consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on my next free pattern and it will also just support the channel as well. So if you're a member over on our Facebook group you will already be aware that we are starting our Christmas projects this this week and we're starting with a really traditional project for a Christmas stocking so it's really a clean looking simple stocking I've kept the pattern as simple as possible so that everybody can enjoy this pattern and you're gonna need some Aran weighted yarn for your stocking now the yarn that I've used is the Women's Institute soft and smooth so I've used the cream for the toe the heel and the cuff and then the dark green for the body of the stocking for this one. For the one I'm doing in the tutorial, I've used the cream again for the toe, heel and top. And then for the body, I've used the red colour. Now, I love this Women's Institute soft and smooth. It's hand wash only, but I've made loads of projects for my own home in this range of yarn. And as long as you wash it at 30, lie it flat to dry it, I, I've never had a problem with it. But any yarn yarn that you want to use will work. Any colours that you want, what you're going to need is for the toe, heel and the top, you're going to need around 40 grams. And for the body, you're going to need around 60 grams. So, what else will you need? You're going to need a 5mm crochet hook, you're going to need a pair of scissors, a darning needle and you'll also need a stitch marker. So let's start our Christmas patterns with our lovely traditional stocking. Grab your hooks, grab your yarn, grab a cuppa and let's learn this together. begin this toe of our stocking you're going to want to make a magic ring the yarn around your fingers making the X pull it straight back down turn your fingers over and you've got two parallel strands of yarn if you want a slowed down version of how to make a magic ring I have done a video on it and I'll link it in the description but then you're just going to pop your hook under the first strand of yarn catch on to the second one and pull it underneath twist your hook upwards and just grab back onto that second strand of yarn and pull it through the loop that's on your hook and that's your magic ring. You want to turn your magic ring so your loose end if your right hand is on the left of you and the opposite if you're left handed and what you're going to do is you're going to chain one and then we're going to place eight UK half treble crochets into this magic ring remembering that we need to crochet around the ring but also the loose end so I pinch them together there with my thumb and middle finger and you're going to yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three loops so that's one yarn over again back into your magic ring pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all loops that's two three next one four five six seven and eight so then when you pull on this loose end here it'll draw your magic ring together and just close it up and that will give a nice snug close to the bottom of your toe so there's nothing going to pop out of your stocking and then what you want to do is you're just going to slip stitch it to the top of your very first half treble crochet stitch which is just here so don't get confused with this here which is the chain one that we did so you don't want to be going into there go into your first official stitch so you're just going to insert your hook yarn over pull through and pull through again just to slip stitch to close moving on to round two you're going to chain one and into that same space where your chain one is coming out of so straight here into this space 
is where we're going to place our first stitch and what we're going to do for round two is we're going to place a half treble crochet increase in every stitch around so in total by the end of round two you should have 16 stitches so you're going to yarn over insert your hook into that stitch that your chain one's coming out of and pull up a loop yarn over and pull through all three loops yarn over again go back into the same stitch pull up a loop three loops yarn over pull through all three loops don't forget to pop your stitch marker into that very first stitch just so you don't lose track then you're going to move on to your next stitch along and into that stitch again you're going to place a half treble crochet increase so two half treble crochets into that stitch and in the remaining six stitches so if you want to go ahead and do that press pause come back to me when you're ready to move up to round three and we'll do that together so I've just done my 16 half trebles and I just before I joined it wanted to show you be careful this here is our slip stitch and that's our chain one so don't be tempted to put an extra increase in there so it's important keep checking your stitch count is correct that is the slip stitch and not a stitch that you're going to be putting anything into so once you've got your 16 half treble crochets pop your stitch marker out and you're going to slip stitch to that first stitch where you've just taken the marker out of inserting your hook pulling through and pull through again to slip stitch close to move on to round three you're going to chain one again and into this first stitch here that the chain one is coming out of we're going to place another half treble increase so two half trebles into there the yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three loops and then place a second one into that same space that your chain one was coming out of replace your stitch marker and then into the next stitch along you're just going to place one half treble crochet next stitch along is an increase one and two and the next stitch along is just one on its own so an increase just means we're doing um, two of the same stitch in the stitch from the row below. And that's our round repeat for this. So the next stitch I'm going to place an increase, so two half trebles into that stitch, then one into the next, two into the next, one into the next, two into the next, one into the next, all the way around until I get back up to here and I should be finishing on one half treble crochet on its own. So if you want to press pause while you make your way around for round three and come back to me when you're ready to join and move up to round four. So I've just finished off round three. I'm gonna slip stitch to the top of this first stitch here. So again, here's my chain one and here's my slip stitch. So it's into this very first stitch that I want to join to and chain one. Round four, we're going to place one half treble crochet starting where our chain one is coming out of in every stitch around. So our stitch count will remain at 24 when we come round to the end of round four. So if you want to work your way around placing one half treble crochet in every stitch around and come back to me when you're ready to join and move up to round five. Just finish my fourth round and because we didn't put any increases in that round you'll notice that your work is starting to turn up now we want to actually push it the opposite way to the way that it's naturally turning up so that means that your right side is on the outside now and we're just going to slip stitch to this first stitch here so pop your stitch marker out slip stitch to join and chain one so for round five the round repeat for this round is going to be a half treble increase so two stitches into this first stitch again where your chain one is coming out of pop your stitch marker back into that first stitch and one half treble crochet into the next two stitches and you'll repeat that all the way around so into the next stitch is an increase so two stitches into that stitch 
and then one half treble crochet into the next two stitches and just repeat that all the way around and at the end of round five you should have a stitch count of 32. So if you want to press pause until you're ready to join together and we can move up to round six. So I've just come to the end of round five and I'm just again going to slip stitch it to the top of this very first stitch that I placed and then chain one. For round six the repeat is going to be a half treble crochet increase into the first stitch that your chain one is coming out of and then one half treble crochet in the next three stitches. So let's do the first couple together. So into this first stitch here, half treble crochet increase. Your stitch count at the end of round six should be at 40. And then into the next three stitches, we're just going to place one half treble crochet. There's my second and there's my third. And then I'm going to repeat that again. So into my next stitch, half treble increase. And then one half treble into the next three stitches. One, two and three. So repeat that pattern all the way around. Come back to me when you're ready to join and move up to round seven. I've just come to the end of round six, so I'm gonna pop my stitch marker out, slip stitch to that first stitch, just to join, and chain one. So for round seven, we are just going to place one half treble crochet in every stitch around, starting where our chain one is coming from. So our stitch count for round seven will remain at 40. So we're not doing any increases here. We're just placing one half treble crochet in every stitch around for a total stitch count of 40. So if you wanna make your way around and come back to me when you're ready to join round seven and move up to round eight and we can do that together. So I've just come to the end of round seven and my stitch count is still at 40. Just gonna pop that stitch marker out, slip stitch to my first stitch to join and chain one. So round eight is our final part of the cream toe and then we're gonna move on to the red. So you're gonna to wanna to have your second color if, you, if you're choosing to change color handy now and a pair of scissors for when we come to the end of round eight. So the round repeat for round eight is a half treble crochet increase followed by one half treble crochet in the first four stitches. So let's just do the first couple together. So into the same stitch that your chain one is coming out of, you're going to place two half treble crochets. And pop your stitch marker back into that first stitch. And then one half treble crochet into the next four stitches. One, two, three and four. At the end of this round your stitch count should be 48. So my next stitch is my increase. So I'm going to place two half treble crochets into that one and then one half treble crochet into the next four stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. So if you want to make your way around for round eight, come back to me when you're ready to join and move up to round nine and we can do that together. So I've just finished off round eight. I'm gonna snip my yarn. So I'm just gonna pop out my stitch marker and to close round eight, I'm gonna slip stitch to join again, but I'm not going to go underneath both of the strands of yarn that make up the top of the stitch. I'm only gonna be going underneath the back loop of the stitch. So the back loop is the loop that's furthest away out of the two that make up the top of the stitch, looks like the V. So the one closest to you here is your front loop and the one furthest away here is your back loop. So you're gonna pop your hook into the center of that V and push forward and just go underneath that back loop. 
I just hold my cream loose ends there with my pointer finger just so it doesn't get too loose. And then take your red yarn and just drape that over your hook and pull it through. Give a little pull on that cream loose end just to tighten everything up and then you can chain one just to secure that onto your work. Now it's up to you whether you leave these hanging loose to weave them in a little bit later on. I'm going to crochet around them <laughs> because I really can't um, stand weaving in loose ends so I'm a bit of a lazy crocheter. So what I'm going to do is for round nine starting in the same stitch where I've just attached my red I'm going to do a back loop only UK double crochet. So I'm just going to insert my hook again onto that same strand of yarn that I did to join my red. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Two loops on my hook. Yarn over and pull through both loops. And then I'm going to place one back loop only double crochet in every stitch around. My stitch count for round nine will remain at 48 stitches. So I'm moving into my next stitch along, popping my hook from the top into the middle and pushing forward to pick up just that back strand of yarn that makes up the top of the stitch. Yarning over, pulling up a loop and placing a back loop only double crochet. Moving into my next stitch, inserting my hook into the middle of the stitch, pushing forward underneath that back loop only and placing another. And you're gonna do that all the way around for round nine. Your stitch count will remain at 48. So when you are ready to move up to round 10, if you want to come back to me at that point, so if you press pause now, make your way around, placing one back loop only, double crochet in every stitch for a total stitch count of 48, and I'll see you in a second. So I'm just at my last two stitches of round nine, So here is where I slip stitch and pulled through the red and that's my chain one and I'm going to join in this very first stitch here again slip stitching back loop only so inserting my hook into the centre of that first stitch pushing my hook forward underneath that back loop yarn over pull through and pull through again. Now for rows 10 through to row 24 you're going to repeat row 9. So you're just going to chain one and one back loop only, double crochet in every stitch around. Back loop slip stitch to join each round, chain one and then continue. So you'll just repeat row 9 for row 10 through to the end of row 24. At that point then we'll start working the um, heel together so you'll want your cream but so you'll want your cream color again at that point so if you want to hit pause and come back to me when you're finishing up row 24 and we'll start on the heel together I'm just about to finish up row 24 so to finish row 24 what you want to do is insert your hook into the first stitch that you did but under both loops this time not just the back loop and then you're going to yarn over and pull through and pull through to slip stitch to join. Then just chain one and we're just going to cut our red colour or whatever colour that you've decided to do the main body of your sock in. Just snip that off for the moment and pop that colour over to one side and grab the colour that you want to do, work your heel in. So hopefully now at this point your stocking is looking a little bit like this. I'm just going to grab my cream to start my heel. So I'm going to turn my stocking back over so I've got the seam running down the centre here. So this is going to be the back. And where we want to start our heel is, so this is the knot where we've just tied off the colour. Where we've just chained one and tied it off. So you should see that sort of stitch there, just to the side, underneath and to the side of your knot. So you're going to count one, so that's the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
10, 11, 12 and pop your hook into that 12th stitch. So you're going to be going underneath both your loops while we're working this heel. It's um, just a normal double crochet that we're doing here. So you want to be picking up both your loops of the stitch. So then you want to just hang your heel colour over your hook and pull it through that stitch. and chain one. So again I'm going to carry my loose ends across just to make it a little bit easier for me so I don't have to weave in my loose ends and into um, this stitch here where I've just chained one I'm just going to place one double crochet and then into the next 23 stitches going across I'm going to place a double crochet so in total I'm going to have 24 double crochets so that's my second three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and 12 19, 20, four more, 21, 22, 23 and 24. But now we've got our 24, we need to chain one and turn our work. So this type of heel is called a short row heel, so it means that we're going to be decreasing and increasing our stitches to form the shape of the heel. If you've never done one before trust the process you might be thinking at first what on earth are you doing Lisa but it will work out so just trust it. <laughs> Leave me a comment below if you've, if, if you've ever used this method before. I do like it when I'm making um, socks and things. So what we need to do is each row we need to lose a stitch at the beginning and a stitch at the end. So once you've chained one, you're going to skip this first double crochet here and work directly into the second one. And then you're going to work 21 more double crochets. So if you want to pause while you go ahead and do that and then come back to me and I'll show you how we skip the end one and move up to the next row. So that's 21 and 22. And this very last stitch here, I'm just gonna leave that not worked into. So just leave that empty for now. Chain one, turn your work again and just repeat that. So we're gonna skip this first one, double crochet into the second one, and then we're gonna do 19 more. So in total, we will have um, 20 double crochets on this row. So that's three. So if you press pause and come back to me when you're ready to move up to the next row. And 20. So I've left that last stitch there and that's just my chain one. Make sure you're counting this because you want to make sure the stitch count remains the same. So your next row, chain one and turn. Again, skip the very first stitch and start in the second stitch and we're going to do a total of 18 double crochets going across. So if you want to do those 18 double crochets and then come back to me and here's my 18. Chain one and turn again. The next row we're going to again decrease, so another decrease at the beginning and the end. So skip your first double crochet and work into your second double crochet. And this row you'll do in total 16 double crochets. So hit pause whilst you do that and then come back to me. Chain one, turn your work again. We're going to skip the first one again and work into the second one, a double crochet 
and one in the next 11 so for this one we'll have 14 so press pause while you work your way across and come back to me when you're ready for the next row which will be our last decrease so I've just done my 14 double crochets so I'm going to chain one turn my work and this is the last time we'll do this little part of it forming these steps and um, we're going to skip this first one again working into the second one and place a double crochet there and one double crochet in the next 11 so in total we'll have 12 so that's four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve I'm really sorry if you can hear the fireworks in the background it's bonfire night here in the UK so now we've finished with our decreasing we're going to start increasing again and picking up these stitches that we've dropped and it'll form the heel shape for you so what you want to do is chain one and turn your work and you want to put one double crochet in every stitch across starting in this first stitch from for this row so you'll have 12 going across the top so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so what we want to do is we need to increase this back up to the 24 to keep our stocking in shape so then just turn your work on its side a little bit and we're going to add a double crochet in this row end here so the side of the step we're going to pop a double crochet there so it doesn't really matter whereabouts it goes I prefer to pick up two loops because it keeps it looking nice and neat so place a double crochet in that end stitch then place a double crochet in this um, stitch here that we missed below it and then what you're going to do is you're going to slip stitch into this very next row end stitch on the side so again I prefer just going underneath two of the strands of yarn that make up the post of that stitch yarn over pull through and pull through just to slip stitch so we've just increased that there by doing those little steps by two and you can see it's already starting to have a much rounded much more rounded edge like you'd see in the heel of a sock so we're going to do the same over here and go back and each time we go backwards and forwards we just add a couple more stitches so what you're going to do next is chain one and we just want to skip the slip stitch so we're not going to work into that slip stitch move into your first double crochet and place one double crochet in every stitch across and you should have 14 so that's two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 perfect so far so now we're back at the end again so we're going to repeat what we did at the other side we're going to put a double crochet here in this row end stitch a double crochet here in this stitch and then we're going to slip stitch into this row end so again we're adding two double crochets which will take us up to 16 
So double crochet in the row end, double crochet into the top of that st um, stitch that we skipped and then slip stitch into the next row end. So just pull through and pull through again. Chain one and turn your work. Again, we're gonna skip the slip stitch. So we're skipping this that our chain one is coming out of and we're working into our first double crochet, which is here. And we should have 16 double crochets now going across. So that's one, two, three, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15 and 16. Lovely. So now we're at the end. We need to put another double crochet here on the um, end stitch. Um, so I tend to just go, it's, it's a bit, looks like a bit of a big jump but it'll be fine it pulls itself together this is what we just just trust me so pop your hook underneath those two strands of yarn and place a double crochet it can be it can be anywhere on that side as long as you're picking up two strands of yarn and then you're going to move over into the stitch that we skipped when we was doing our decreases and place another double crochet there and then we're going to slip stitch to this end row here and then we've just added another two stitches so we should have 18 now so chain one turn your work again skip this slip stitch so nothing into the to where your chain one is coming out of move moving over onto your first double crochet one double crochet and we should have 18 going across now so that's one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, oops, 17, and there's 18. And then we're going to repeat the same step, so we're going to add one double crochet into the row end here on the side one into the top of this double crochet here and then we're going to slip stitch to this end row here just to pull the shape down and that will add another two stitches so there's my row end double crochet a double crochet in my skipped stitch and then slip stitch to the next row end. So again, we're gonna chain one, turn your work. We're gonna skip the slip stitch and place a double crochet into the very first double crochet and one double crochet in the next 19. So we should have in total 20. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20 and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a double crochet here into the row end one double crochet into this very first double crochet that we missed and then we're going to slip stitch into the same stitch that the very last stitch is in here so right into here so double crochet on the row end double crochet in the skipped stitch from the row below and then slip stitch into the red stitch and chain one so we've now got 22 stitches so we've just got another increase to make so again we're going to skip the slip stitch here and work into our very first double crochet and place a double crochet into there and we should have in total 22 stitches now to work into so there's my first one two three four Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, and twenty-two. So now I just need to add a stitch here on the row end and add a stitch into this skip stitched here and then that's all of our increasing done. So double crochet into the row end, double crochet into the stitch that we skipped, and then slip stitch where we joined here into the red. And hopefully it looks a little bit like a heel for you now. So it's quite easy. What I do like to do is because it looks um, just it just looks a teeny bit not symmetrical at the minute. So I just go all the way across it now, just placing one double crochet in the top of every double crochet, and then we're moving back to the red. So chain one and turn. Again, we're going to miss this slip stitch here and work into your very first double crochet and place one double crochet all the way across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23 and 24, perfect. Right, so now all we need to do is just go into slip stitch here, just to join 
and chain one and fasten off. So leave yourself a long enough loose end. It's a good idea if you are weaving your ends in to weave them in at this point before your stocking goes any bigger. But if you're doing the lazy way like me, you're fine. You can just crochet over everything. So this, it looks a little bit like a giant slipper at the moment. Okay, so you can probably just see, I've put my stitch marker here in the middle. I'm just gonna show you how I measured that out. So with your um, so with your stocking facing away from you and the open part for the leg facing up, what you want to do from this side here, you're gonna count in 13 stitches. So what you need to be careful of when you're doing this little part is, let me just show you. This here is the knot that we secured the cream yarn with and this is our slip stitch. Don't count either of those in this stitch count or else it'll put your pattern off. So we're counting from this very first double crochet here and we're counting 13. So there's my first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 and 13. So I've just marked mine with a stitch marker just so I've got time to uh, join my red yarn. I'm going back to red, but you'll be going back to whatever colour you want your leg part of your stocking to be. And I like to just pop it onto my hook by using a slip knot when I'm joining in the middle here. My goodness, these fireworks are never ending. This is the first year um, one of my cats Tilly um, hasn't gone into hiding. I'm so proud, she's getting so brave. Rocco never wakes up with him, he's cool as a cucumber, but um, yeah, poor Tilly Winks has been frightened to death of them up until now. But she's chilling, she's here snoozing with me. So, what we want to do in this stitch that we put our stitch marker in, we're just going to attach our yarn using the back loop only. So just like we've done previously in the pattern, insert your hook into the centre of the stitch and push forwards and just pick up that back loop. Yarn over and pull through and pull through the loop on your hook just to attach your yarn and chain one. Once you've got that yarn attached, then you just take out that stitch marker and we're going to do um, in total now 12 back loop only double crochets starting here where we've just attached the yarn. So we're going to insert our hook back into that stitch and place our first back loop only double crochet and then one in the next 11 stitches. So we'll have 12 in total. So there's two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And this last one can be a little bit tight to get into, so just take your time and make sure you're only picking up that back loop. And then our next stitch is gonna go across this row end stitch here in the cream. And then we're going to skip here where we've slip stitched and joined the cream and move into this very first red on its own. So we're gonna do a double crochet two together and we're just going to insert our hook into the row end here, picking up two stitch two strands of yarn which make up the side of the stitch yarn over and pull up a loop so you've got two loops on your hook then we're going to skip this little corner part here of the heel and move into this next stitch here and you're just going to insert your hook insert it under both loops keep this nice and secure this part here and pull up another loop so you've got three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three. Now I like to keep my tension nice and tight when I do that part because you don't want any big holes forming in your stocking. And then what we're going to do in the next 22 stitches across is place one back loop only double crochet. So if you want to pause while you do those 
22 back loop only double crochets and then come back to me and then we'll work the last part of round the heel so I am just at my last back loop only double crochet and you'll see that that leaves me one stitch that isn't worked into so what we want to do next is we're going to insert our hook in underneath both the strands of yarn this time and pull up a loop so this is in our second um, double crochet two together and then where you want to go is just this space here where we've slip stitched and attached the cream to the red pull up another loop three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three again keeping your tension nice and tight and now what we should have is um, 12 stitches left to work into so we're going to go back to working the back loop only double crochets which should bring us back to where we joined the red yarn so there's two three and 12 so then I'm just going to slip stitch to join this round so that's round one of the leg completed so I'm going to slip stitch and again I'm going to slip stitch similar to how we did when we um, made the foot part and I'm just going to go underneath the back loop only of that very first double crochet so your stitch count will still be um, 48 now and you're going to chain one and so for round two of the leg up until round 34 of the leg you're going to do exactly the same as we did with the foot so we're going back to one back loop only double crochet in every stitch along and when you come back around here you're going to slip stitch again just to the back loop only chain one move up to your next round always starting your first stitch where your chain one is coming out of so if you want to press pause while you do that get another cuppa after we finish that heel oh you it makes me panic every time i come to doing a heel i don't know why because they're relatively easy but i always panic when i'm doing them right so you're going to be repeating that round now up until 34 when you're finishing up row 34 come back to me and we'll add the um, cream back onto the top of the stocking okay so I'll see you shortly so I have just finished my 34th round of the leg so hopefully your stocking is looking similar to mine now so we just need to put the cuff on the top so I've not joined this round yet so I'm just going to take my scissors cut off a nice length of the red to either weave in or crochet around whichever you prefer pop out my stitch marker and grab my cream color or whichever color you're choosing to do your cuff in so to join this round what I'm going to do is just insert my hook underneath both strands of yarn that make up the top of that stitch and then just drop this red and just secure it with a finger on the back there so it doesn't go too loose pick up your contrast color drape it over your hook and pull through all loops on your hook and then just give a little pull on your loose ends just to tighten everything up again I'm going to crochet around my loose ends but this is the only round that we're just going to turn the work so what we're going to do now is we're just going to turn our work so that means that the right side of the work will be on the inside so when we flip the cuff of the stocking over then the right side will be facing outwards so what we want to do here is we are going to start again where we've just joined our yarn here and we're going to chain one and into this same space we're going to place one half treble crochet so you're yarning over inserting your hook pulling up that loop so you've got three loops on your hook 
yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook and all we're going to do is move around the top of this stocking placing one half treble crochet into the into every stitch around so your stitch count will remain the same it'll remain at 48 so if you want to press pause come back to me when you're ready to move up to the next round and we can do that together I'm just placing my last UK half treble crochet of the first round of this cuff and I'm just going to slip stitch to join so obviously these aren't back loop or anything these half treble crochets they're just regular half treble crochets going underneath both loops you're then going to change one and you get you're going to pop a half treble crochet in the same stitch as that chain one and one half treble crochet in every stitch around for a total of 48 stitches your stitch, your stitch count should remain the same in total you're going to do this until you've got eight rows of the cream cuff completed so if you want to press pause until you get up to that point and then I'll just show you how we finish it off and add the little hanger to your stocking so press pause and come back to me when you are finishing up your eighth row of the cream cuff so I've just finished my eight rounds of the cuff so it should be looking a little bit like this now and I'm just going to slip stitch to this first stitch here just to join so insert your hook yarn over pull through pull through again and then you're just going to chain one take your scissors snip yourself off a nice length of loose end just for you to weave in at the end and then pull up on that chain one place the chain one between two fingers and pull firmly to secure make sure you hold on to that chain one or else it'll pull your work out of shape so then when you turn your roll your cuff over your stocking should hopefully be looking like this and I'm really, really pleased with how they've turned out. I think that they're really simple but classic and easy for any skill level to complete. Um, so all I want to do now is just make a little hanger for the inside here. So I like to use the colour of yarn that I've done my cuff and my toe and my heel in. But if you want to use a different colour, then go ahead and use whichever colour you would prefer. So what you want to do is make yourself a slip knot and pop that onto your hook. And we're just going to chain 21 so you're going to yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through so that's four chains five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 17 18 19 20 21 so all we're going to do is we're going to go back down this chain and do a row of double crochet. So it's up to you. You can go into the chains from the front if you prefer. I like to turn them over and go into the back bumps of each chain. So that's the strand of yarn that runs down the center of your chain. So you're gonna skip the first one and crochet into the second one. So insert your hook into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. And you're just going to do that all the way along placing one UK double crochet into every stitch so because we skipped that one at the beginning we should have a total stitch count of 20 for our hanger so if you want to press pause while you go ahead and work your way across and come back to me when you are ready to attach it to your stocking just got two last chains to work into Here's my very last chain. So that's my 20 double crochets. So all you want to do is chain one. Now you do want to leave yourself a good five or six inches here because we're going to use that length of the chain just to attach it to our stocking. Pull up on that chain one. 
hold the chain one and pull firmly just to secure it. So next what you want to do is take this long loose end that we've just left and thread that onto your darning needle. And then I fold my little row of double crochets over in half and I just like to work a couple of stitches just to secure these two halves together before I pop it onto my stocking. So I'll just work about four stitches just making sure that's nice and secure. And then on the inside of your stocking where I like to attach it is if you look on the outside you'll be able to see it a bit more clearly than on the inside when you've got the shadow in there but you'll be able to see this seam where we've gone up along the, ro the rows so I like to attach it in this seam area here so I know it's definitely halfway round and about one row into the red colour and then once I've got that positioned exactly where I want it and it's sitting where I want it to be I'm just going to secure that onto the stocking. Try to be as neat as I can but it's not really going to be seen anyway because the cuff is going to cover what is on the outside up but I do try to keep it nice and nice and neat and I go up a couple of rows just to make it a little bit more secure because ladies we don't want to lose our stockings at Christmas. So once I'm happy that that's nice and secure, just finish off with it. Coming through on the inside, I'll knot these two loose ends together. And then I will do one last job of weaving in these couple of ends. So when I weave in my loose ends, I'll just show you on this one here what I like to do. Once I've threaded my needle, I like to just go down picking up a couple of stitches as I go along. I usually go down about three or four rows and pull through. Don't pull it too tight because you don't want it pulling your work out. And then this last stitch that I've gone under, I skip that one and go onto the next one and follow the same path back up. But I don't go quite as high, so I won't go back up to the very top here where it'll be really visible and pull through and then repeat that by running it back down in the same space for a third time. And that's how I weave in my loose ends and I've never really had any problems with anything touch, I need to say touch wood, I've never had any major problems with anything coming undone. So rule of three I reckon. So then snip that and you've just got these two loose ends to weave in and then you are done. So I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please give this uh, a thumbs up if you have, which really supports the channel if you could do that for me. I'd appreciate it. And if you do make one of these gorgeous stockings, I'd love to see it. Join us over on the Facebook page or even over on Instagram. The details are on the screen now. But next week, just so you know, we have got another Christmas theme which I'm really excited about. Do you want a little sneaky peek? It may or may not be a Christmas stocking for an animal. I'm so excited, I can't even tell you. Anyway, that's enough from me for this week. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it. Stay safe, have lots of fun and happy hooking. I'll see you soon. Bye.